Obviously, with Sheikh Al Halali overseas, he is yet to respond to the latest controversy over his reported remarks. Mark Bannerman with that report. A climate of fear and violence has dominated the run-up to East Timor's first election since independence five years ago. But today, peace prevailed as thousands turned out across the country to vote for a new president. Eight candidates are vying for the job, but the firm favourites are Nobel Peace Laureate Jose Ramos Horta and the former Guerrilla and Fretland Party candidate Francisco Luolo Guterres. The result will not be known for days, and if no individual achieves more than 50% of the vote, another ballot will have to take place. The next step in the democratic process is parliamentary elections mid-year to elect a new prime minister. But the question remains, will this new political era end the cycle of bloodshed that's paralysed efforts to rebuild the strife-torn and poverty-stricken nation? Shortly, I'll be speaking to East Timor's First Lady, Kirsty Sword Guzmal, about her country's future. But first, we cross to reporter Anne Barker in Dili for the latest. Anne Barker, by all accounts, today's election has gone smoothly despite the events of last week. Ali, it went extremely smoothly. I think the international electoral observers were quite stunned at how peaceful it was today. There was a very strong turnout of voters very early on. There were hundreds of people queuing by even early morning. The polls opened at 7. And there was none of the incidents that people feared. There was a very strong security presence. There were UN police, Australian troops and uh, thousands of them on the streets. So uh, they were surprised that there was no, uh, there were none of, the, the, none of the sporadic violence that we've seen in the last couple of weeks. And the poll went very smoothly, except for for a shortage of ballots late this afternoon. The UN says that it had to helicopter about 24,000 extra ballot papers around the country because they sort of miscalculated just where people would be uh, voting and, and which polling booths they would go to. At the same time, it's been very peaceful today, but is there any concern about what may happen while we wait for an outcome? Well, yes. I mean, everything hinges now on the vote and the count. Uh, counting began as soon as the polls closed at four o'clock this afternoon, and they're continuing right now. Now, it's the parties and the candidates themselves who will have an early indication of just who might be the winner, if there is a winner out of this election or if it goes to a second election. Uh, the a formal announcement is not expected until later this week. So uh, the big fear is that if Fretland, the major party here, doesn't win or doesn't win decisively today, that that could spark some sort of backlash from its any supporters around the country. Now, there are eight candidates, but as we said in the introduction to, to this interview, it's obviously being seen as a two-horse race. Are there any early indications of which way the vote may go? Well, the two front runners are Fretland's candidate, Lou Olo, and Jose Ramos Horta. Now, Fretland is adamant today that they will win a majority out of uh, today's vote. But if you speak to some of the electoral observers around town, they say that that's a mathematical impossibility. That's simply because there were eight candidates and all of them have a, a varying degree of support uh, coming into the election, that it's impossible that anyone could get 50 per cent of the vote. The, uh, the expectation is that the two front runners will be Jose Ramos Horta and uh, Lou Olo. There is a possibility that a third candidate, La Sama, could in fact be one of those two, perhaps defeating Jose Ramos Horta. But I think that's seen as a, a very outside scenario. Now, if we get to, to a runoff election, which it certainly sounds that's what we're heading for, who benefits from the votes of those who have been knocked out? Well, that could be crucial because there will be six candidates, obviously, whose votes uh, ultimately didn't uh, get their candidate uh, into that second election. Now, it's, it depends very much whether they will even vote at all because uh, the, uh, the second election... Uh, voting is not compulsory here and those candidates you would expect will be non-Fretland voters. So if they actually bother voting, then they would probably vote for Jose Ramos Horta if he is in that election. But if, uh, if they do not bother voting, they could well say to themselves, uh, my candidate didn't get get up, so I won't bother voting again, in which case Fretland is, is probably the front runner. And Barker, we're in for an interesting few days and few weeks. Many thanks for talking to us. The election result brings to an end.